Hello again. We've come to the penultimate, that means the second last of our sessions on discipleship. I've been, I've been enjoying this, and I hope that it has been of help to you. I just want to say about session eight, it was probably our longest session, and I wanted to, and I actually cut it down. There was a lot more I wanted to say. If you feel that your core could do with more teaching on the Salvation Army's principle of holiness, on our teaching on holiness, then feel free to invite me and Mariana to come and do a teaching session on holiness in your core, because that is something I feel that is very important in our life as disciples, that we understand that we need to live a life of holiness. But now on to this second last of our sessions, and we are going to be looking at the world again, but not us living in the world, but rather us ministering to the world. So it's discipleship for the world, discipleship for the world. In other words, that we exist for the world. And in that respect, two points. <clears throat> Evangelization is the first, and we're going to look at Mark chapter 16 from verses 15 through to 20, where Jesus gives another commission, part of the Great Commission, in which he speaks about how we should go about evangelizing the world, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And then the other aspect is ministry. So it's evangelism from Mark chapter 16, and it is ministry. In other words, going into the world discovering the needs of the world, and then helping people in their need. And we will turn to the book of Luke, chapter 10, from verse 25 through 37, to discover those truths. So firstly, evangelization. And when I read the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, I see that Jesus is concerned with us, listen, not preaching the Salvation Army, not preaching about the Salvation Army, not preaching about anything other than the kingdom of God. In fact, the very first words that come out of Jesus' mouth when he starts his three-year ministry is that the kingdom of God is at hand. He preached about the kingdom through his lips and through his actions. So sharing the good news means preaching about the kingdom of God. And I want you, I want you to know this is not just telling the story, but it is preaching in order to get them to make a decision, calling them for a verdict on whether they accept this truth or not. Sometimes we are content just to share the good news and think that we have done our job. No, it is not just sharing the good news, it is calling for a verdict. I remember many times as a young teenager Salvationist joining in the Salvation Army open air where there were 30, 40 of us in the open air Salvationists and we would go into a, an area and we would share the good news of Jesus, and then we would pack up our things and drive off, and nobody would have a chance to make a decision about what we had shared with them. It is important that if we are going to be preaching about the kingdom of God, that we do what Jesus did, that we, we share the good news, and we call people to make a decision about it, verses 15 and 16. And then not only are we expected to preach the kingdom, but we are expected to bring in the kingdom. Wherever Jesus went, the kingdom came. Wherever Jesus was, the kingdom was. And if we are the body of Christ, if we are Jesus' representatives today in the world, then where we are, Jesus is. And where Jesus is, the kingdom should be coming. The, sh the kingdom should be brought in. In other words, we're talking about the transformation of people's lives, of their circumstances, and their conversion 
into new life in Jesus Christ. The kingdom should come when we are out evangelizing. And when I say out evangelizing, I mean we must be where the people are. I remember that in one of the core where I was a core officer, <clears throat> one of the people in that core said to me, I don't understand why we are so obsessed with evangelism. We've got a notice board outside. Everybody knows the times of the meetings. And if they don't come in here, it's not our problem. He had no concept of the church sent, the church being part of God's mission to the world, that we need to go out and share the good news with people out there. So evangelism, evangelism is a very, very important part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I would encourage you, if you are uncertain about what it actually means in real terms to be sharing the good news, what, what are the things that you are supposed to say to your neighbor, to your family member, to the person that you work with, the person that you're sitting next to on the, on the train? What are the actual statements you are needing to make? What comprises the gospel? Then I suggest that you as a church, you as a core, get together to study how to present the gospel to G of Jesus Christ. The other thing that is important when it comes to evangelization is our personal testimony. It is sharing what God has actually done in our lives. In fact, in the early Salvation Army, many people were saved, not through hearing the preaching of the gospel, but listening to the testimony of what God had done to people that they knew and people that they could see had been changed by Jesus Christ. Your testimony is a powerful tool in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And usually a testimony has three parts. Before I met Jesus, that you met Jesus, the fact of meeting Jesus, and then what life has been like since you met Jesus. So I would suggest that some of us polish up on our testimonies in order to get that ready to share with somebody else. The testimony of the gospel and then the facts of the gospel, very important. And if you need help with that, then I'm sure that we can support you in that. In Luke chapter 10, we come to this, the second part of what it means to be a disciple for the world, and that is ministry. Um, the Salvation Army has got an interesting mission statement in which we say that our work that we do in helping other people is motivated by our love for God and God's love for us and God's love for them. In other words, God's love and, and love for humankind should be the motivation of our ministry. And we see that in this passage in Luke chapter 10, in verses 28 and 29, we see the motivation for ministry is love, love for God and love for one's fellow man. <clears throat> we see in this story, this well-known story of the Samaritan, we see that there is a measure of ministry. How far will you go in order to help somebody else? Sadly to say, many of us will not go very far. We do not want to be inconvenienced in our everyday lives in order to help somebody else. In this story, we read of the measure of ministry. We see that this man put himself at personal risk. We see that he got personally involved. He didn't pay a professional. He became personally involved and he made a personal commitment to make sure that this man that needed help was okay until he was well enough to look after himself. There's a measure of ministry and it means going way past what we consider to be convenient in order to help somebody else. And that should be the, the hallmark of any disciple. That should be the hallmark of any church. And that certainly should be the hallmark of any salvationist that we go to any lengths to help somebody who is in distress, somebody who's in need. And you don't have to go to China or to India like we used to in the past. These people are on our doorsteps. These people are in our streets. These people are even in our halls. People who are in desperate need of our help and the light of the gospel. So we see that 
This man is motivated by his love for God and for humankind. We see that he is measureless in his generosity in getting personally involved to help other people. And I would encourage you, very often people are surprised to hear that many salvationists are not directly involved in the alleviating of need that the Salvation Army is known for. That very few of us are actually involved a uh, few of us members are actually involved in helping the homeless, in helping those who are, are in need and so on. People who have serious challenges. I'm asking us to become a Salvation Army that is compassionate, that is filled with the love of God. And that will not rest until people that are around us who are in need have those needs met in Jesus Christ. Evangelization and ministry. That is why disciples exist. We exist to share the good news of Jesus and to bring relief for people in their suffering and their need. And I pray that you will understand that welcoming people home to a life with Jesus involves just this, sharing the good news with them and helping them in their real needs that they may have. And as you discuss this as a core, as you discuss this, uh, and reflect on it in your own individual discipleship. I pray that God will bless and challenge you to do what is right, to bring about the kingdom of God just where you are. Amen. May God bless you.